This is a tanned, smoked sheep hide, and they would have cut it and used it for making their, their leggings. And later on in the fall, shirts. With that process, they would have used the, uh, the, the sinew to, to sew these garments up. And if they were going to make a shirt out of this here, they would have, they would have taken two hides and they would have sewed them together. And they did not cut the bottom off at all. They left it long. And uh, they would have sewed it across the top of the shoulders and down the sides, and that would have been their shirt. Or if they wanted leggings, they would have folded it. And it would have looked like this right here for a set of leggings. That would have, that would have been their leggings. And it would have taken two hides to make a shirt and two more hides to make the leggings. This is a sheep hide. Mountain. And it's... Oh, he's still got his face. And see, this is tanned on the inside only. What um, our ancestors would have done if they wanted to make something like uh, moccasins out of this. I did study the, the original pair, the Buffalo Bill. I combined uh, regular footwear knowledge with, with what I studied at the museum up there to try and, and make up a, a pair of winter-type uh, snow moccasins. And uh, I've got my pattern drawn out on here. And using a, a regular piece of obsidian, much the same as they would have, and it is absolutely sharper than any piece of steel that you'll get a hold of. That is the top of our moccasin. And it goes over the foot just like that right there, you see. What we're cutting out right here is, is the sole of the moccasin. Up there in Mummy Cave, it, it had some unique character to it. One thing about that, that boot, there's a huge, high, thick seam goes right down the center of the foot. You can put that moccasin together in a lot of different ways. Why would you put that seam down the center? Probably walking in snow. Because it'd give you some traction. Here is a piece of sinew right here, just the way it would have come out of the back of the animal, right off the back strap. It goes from being a solid piece here to all these little fibers. You see, you see how that breaks down? It's a very strong and durable material. The, the sheep eaters of Mount Shoshone used it. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our needle here and, and see if we can't start doing a little bit of sewing. You have to go through something like this here in order to fully appreciate what they must have done trying to sew up a pair of moccasins. Okay, here's our finished moccasin right here. All right, you can see, you can see where I was talking about the seam in the middle on the bottom of the sole. What I find interesting about that seam, that thick seam down the bottom of that boot is that uh, the uh, mountain Shoshone were known as broken moccasins. Yeah. What kind of a track would you leave if you had that seam right down the center, you'd leave a broken split track. We actually may have the moccasin of a sheep eater here, which is demonstrating why they got called the broken moccasins. Very functional, very warm, made completely out of mountain sheep hide, mountain sheep sinew, and probably greased up with mountain sheep tallow. 